It's Thursday, June 14th, 2012. I'm Rim. I'm Scott. And this is Geek Nights. Tonight, hats. Because we couldn't think of anything better. That's every episode. (laughs) Let's Let's do this. So uh, I got a funny story that I think uh, relates to a funny story you had. My, uh, My GoPro... Fucking fell off my bike while I was riding. Yeah, but yours is still in one piece, right? Well, because I caught it in my hand and then it fell, so I picked it up right away and it was fine. But the mount, literally, like I was riding, and the mount just like went wubba wubba wubba, and before my brain could react, the thing just fell, like out of nowhere. The yeah. thing just cleaved in two. Yeah, mine. All right, so broke in the exact same way. Yep. Around the same time yours broke, and yep. I, I just, I didn't even realize it was falling. It was just like click, click, clickety, clickety, and I was like, whoa, and I picked it up. But then I got a new, I, I emailed them and I was like, hey, that shit broke. And they sent me a free replacement. So I put the free replacement on. That shit broke and I didn't even realize it. I had to backtrack. Luckily, I found the GoPro lying in the middle of the road about five blocks back on my route, going against traffic, you know, to search for it. But it, the go- camera was completely destroyed. Like Smash Smash? Like Hulk? Well, like it was in the shield, right? The black clip on top of the shield that keeps the shield sealed. <laughs> you was, thought you knew what I was laughing at. Yeah. That black clip was just shattered in pieces that I picked up off the ground, right? Yep. The shield itself was mostly in one piece, just has some you know, scarring on the back of it. The the you know, these the you know, the back part that you But could, how'd but the camera get smashed? The camera is in one piece. The L C D part is smashed. The button There's no L C D. Yeah, on the front. A little tiny one. Oh, oh, okay, that thing. Yeah, it's smashed. The buttons, you can't press them, right? Uh, and, like, it doesn't... From far away, it looks like it's in one piece, but you get close to it, and you realize it's, like, bork, right? <laughs> and basically, it's non-functional. Uh, so, GoPro, I want to point out, the same mount that you sell broke three times in New York, like, biking around town, biking. This not wasn't, even, like, hardcore mountain Yeah, biking. this was not jumping off a cliff, skiing, or skydiving. This wasn't or, even, like, jumping over curbs. Yeah, this is regular old just biking around the city. This mount breaks. This is why I realized third-party companies are selling metal mounts, which I ordered. So I'm like, I email GoPro, and I'm like, hey, this time the mount broke again, which is bullshit. Uh, I want to, but you, my camera broke because your mount was faulty. And they're like, well... We'll give you half off a new camera. And I'm like, you should take him to small claims court or something just for well, fun. I mean, it's like I can't because it's like the warranty. I'm like, I'm like, I don't want to be that indignant lady that I because I can't complain about the indignant lady and be the indignant lady. True. But at the same time, there is a big difference. Indign- indignant ladies, that particular brand of person will annoy everybody else around them and be in their way. You can't get away from that lady. It's not indignant lady if you're doing it on your own quietly through the court system. I'm still bothering this customer service person, and it's not their fault, right? They're not the person who made the shitty mount or decided the warranty policy. If GoPro had just had a little thing that said, like, warning, don't actually use this on a bike, it'll break. Yeah, (laughs) this bike mount that we have pictures of using on a bike. Yes, next to your uh, purportedly indestructible camera. Yeah, but anyway, so I guess I, I bought the Surf Edition for half off, to replace the one I had because at least that way I'll get some new accessories I didn't have before. And they also offered me a free mounting accessory, so I guess I'm getting the wrist strap thingy. Ah, we, that, could, we could use that for something. That was the only accessory that would be of any use. That, that you didn't already own. Right, but here's what you got to do. If you have a GoPro, you, you know, they only really show examples of this in these surfing examples, but if you mount it to something and you're moving or at all, at all you should also tether it to that something with a rope or string. I do that when I ski because the thing is, biking, all right, I can go back and get it. Though apparently in your case, that didn't really work. No. But uh, if I'm skiing... You're down a hill and it's now... Uh, this camera is up the hill? It is basically impossible to you go back to up the turn hill. This, you have to turn 90 degrees sideways and go right, left, right, like, like a ladder. It depends. I can do a sort of fishbone thing where you're walking forward. There's a couple of ways to do it, but it's a pain in the ass. It sucks and it hurts. And if I go, just go all the way down and ski back up like at a real mountain, all right, it's been an hour. Let's see if it's still there and if I can even find it. And you got to stop before you get to it. What if you stop below it? That I would <laughs> cry. I think I would just cry. Just a grown man sitting went all the way down the crying. Mountain. You could ask the ski patrol to help you get it. Uh, yeah, actually, luckily, one thing you could do is if, if you ever drop anything skiing, not that you'll ever go skiing, I get the impression. <laughs> yeah. You can just 
Basically, if anyone's coming down the hill, be like, hey, and they'll usually grab whatever you dropped and give it to you. That's not bad. Just the GoPro is kind of tiny. Usually it's like a ski pole. And it's going to be buried in the snow. Yeah, or yeah. a ski or something <laughs> that they're picking up for me. So, yeah, GoPro, I guess we could leverage our negative publicity machine. Whatever. The, you know, and the thing is, it became a little more frustrating because the way they worded their customer service email was pretty much like, hey, order a new one, then tell us the order number, then we'll take half off, right? So I'm like, okay, I did that. And then, I, and then they're like, yeah, there was a miscommunication. You actually have to sort of, you know, send us a picture of your receipt and then we'll take, send you a coupon code. And Wait, I'm picture like, of my receipt? You mean the email? I guess. And I'm like, what the fuck? You told me to do this. And then they're like, no. And they sent, I sent them the quote from the email that they originally What did they say me. to that? They sent the quote of the full email. And actually, the, just the way their email was worded is there was a sentence later in the email that was like about the coupon code. Oh, just, so you got owned there. Yeah, but the Poorly thing, written, but. It was poorly written. But, but it's not your thing on the forum. Read all the words, it, well, yeah. or you're a dumbass. You, I, I guarantee, if you would have gotten the same email, you would have done the same stupid thing. You know, if we hadn't talked about this, you could have showed me the email and be like, "What do you do?" And we could have seen, but now we can't because now I know. It doesn't matter. It's still the point is, is that their mount broke. They should have replaced the camera, which is a lot of money. Uh, they shouldn't sell a mount that clearly that doesn't clearly work. Clearly, is faulty, and they know it's faulty. If you go to Amazon reviews, everyone says, "Yeah, this mount breaks." Uh, and it's then got class action. The Amazon, the Amazon reviews for the metal mounts from the third party company are like, "Man, this thing's overpriced, but it works." <laughs> I'll probably just get it because I want to start it's getting like videos again. It's like 60 bucks for like a metal ring with a stick coming out of it. It's a bunch of bullshit. Well, if, if that's bullshit, make your own. I don't know how to ah, machine. Ah, ah. So I don't really have news per se. It's Thursday. You know, the lounge. Your mom. <laughs> but we did go see Prometheus. So I, got, I guess I want to geek bite it a little bit. All right. You know what? It was a pretty good movie. Dude gets his guts ripped open, his liver gets pecked, and it they just keep pecking. This on this that is liver. a movie. This is the first time in my life there is an early scene with an automated surgery table, and by God, was that not Chekhov's surgery table? Everyone knew that. I saw that thing. I was like, somebody's gonna have an alien extracted from their abdomen with that thing within the bounds of this movie. And sure enough, yeah, I don't even consider that a spoiler. Nope. <laughs> There's an automated surgery that table. That was pretty much the best scene in the whole movie, though, was the, yeah. the using of the uh, Chekhov surgery the table. The second best scene, not to spoil anything, is when one person asks another person a question, and then that person's like, oh, and then he answers it. I don't remember which scene. The, whoa, the question that we didn't understand. Oh, yeah. And the way it was answered. Yeah, yeah. That was a, that was a good scene. Okay. But the movie was pretty good. The special effects were great. I like how they use 3D in this movie because I've seen most 3D movies that I have seen either have like the shit coming at you or Honey, I shrunk the audience or they're really just like it's shoehorned in and done poorly but Prometheus was actually filmed with 3D cameras and it showed like it was like night and day compared to other 3D movies yeah but it was all right but that's the thing it's like they didn't have anything coming at you right and at the same time you know, they, you know, they didn't, you know, really go, whoa, 3D, whoa. So it's like a lot of times you just don't even notice That's the, 3D. the best way to use 3D. Then but it's then just you might as well not even have the 3D. Why? Then it's, it's, it's atmospheric. Like, notice how now I could, like, focus on the foreground and the background, and you got this really big sense of space. And there's See, a contrast between the wide open areas on the planet and the confined areas inside uh, and the depth of the tunnels. Think, but it really shown every time there was a user interface to a thing. Like, that was breathtaking. I think what you really got to do to make 3D really... Is have stuff come out at the screen? No. Because that's what you seem to be going for. No. See, the problem with all 3D, whether you got IMAX 3D, Omnimax, any kind of 3D movie, right, that we have now, yeah. is that even though there's some sort of depth perception, you can tell that that's farther away, that's sort of closer, right? It's still a two-dimensional image. You can't, like, lean your head to the left and look behind the thing a little bit, Right. If they could make it do that somehow, don't ask me how. I don't even know it's possible, right? I don't right? really want that. But see, that's what. But that's the thing is, it's like it's you know, it's not really 3D because it's still you're just. It's really just this square and some pieces, a rectangle, and some pieces of the rectangle are closer. But there's nothing behind them. They're not round. There's nothing behind them. It's not really 3D. Ah, but at the same time, you could argue that for most movies, there's a camera angle. 
And by giving people leeway to poke around in there, then now all those elements that previously in a screenplay don't have to be worried about have to be worried about. Makes it harder for a director to actually have yeah. like a but, unified vision. Well, I mean, the thing is, right, is how much can you really move your head in a movie, right? It, it doesn't need to Scott, be Scott, like, you know what you want? Walk you, around you and look want, at the room from another angle. You want the televisions from that fucked up show that I've talked about. I seem to be the only person in the world who remembers this and watched it from my generation. But uh, Wild Palms. The plot of Wild Palms. Oh, the hologram people? Yeah. In the, other, no. than, other than being about Scientology See, is that they make a device that replaces TV that sits in the living room and the action just takes place in 3D in your living room. Yeah, it doesn't need to be the hologram in the middle of the room. I just want it to be to really enhance that 3D effect is, you know, there's like a ball on the screen. If I lean my head a little bit to the left, it should be like, you know, like my angle should change. Scott, very, that can slightly. be done. It can't be done right now for multiple people at the same time. I know. Without everyone having active glasses as opposed to passive. I know. And by active, I mean more active than anything. But anyway. But I'm saying that. I'm saying that's what yeah. would really make the. I guess effect, I'm just saying. Like if 3D is significantly, gonna, you know, doing the subtle 3D the way it's done is probably the right way to use it without making your movie into an amusement park ride. But what I'm saying is, it's not really that much. You know, it's like. You could see it in 2D and be just fine because the 3D doesn't add that much. But if it added that, that little so angleness, Scott, I, then it would be a significant I boost. would disagree in that there are a few scenes in Prometheus that if they weren't in 3D would not have been nearly as breathtaking. Meh. Especially I, when they uh, turn on the HUD on the alien thing. Meh. And well, you, you, you once argued that aesthetics are meaningless. So anyway, <laughs> but I like this. Movies like this that use 3D in this way are the kinds of movies that will make 3D actually be just... A technology that's used or not used properly as opposed to a gimmick because for the last, what, 40 plus years, it's been a gimmick every time 3D has well, been it's used a in It was a gimmick for so many years, right? Because our 3D technology was sort of crappy, right? Red and blue 3D doesn't really work that well. Now the 3D actually kind of sort of works-ish. Yeah. That's the reason, you know, and you can do it with these cheap plastic glasses. You know, it, it's it's not that obtrusive. Like it used to be. But in terms of you know Prometheus, pretty good movie. I liked it better than I liked Avengers, but not by that much. B and it raised good questions, but uh, I, there's a big discussion going on in our forums, and I've seen a lot of similar discussions around the internet. I'm not arguing it's the greatest movie in the world. It is Hell by no, no means. Alien and Aliens are both much better movies. No kidding. But Prometheus... There are things that you can legitimately complain about, both from a semi-objective critical standpoint well, I mean, it, no. and from a taste like I liked or didn't like this standpoint, but the majority of the criticisms I have seen online are basically bullshit. Like, they're the criticisms of someone who didn't actually watch the movie, or at least someone who didn't pay attention. They'll complain about things that they'll say, like, I didn't understand X or Y didn't make sense, when actually it made perfect people say the same things sense. about anything that's sort of weird and ambiguous right instead of being just a literal straightforward every, what you see is what except you the things they complain moving. about are literal and straightforward they're like why did the guy you know giggle and mess around with the alien well he was high no they but i'm saying like weed. something that wasn't explicitly stated right no but i'm saying things that were pretty much explicitly stated were but also no. points of confusion but i mean th you know what i'm saying it's not there's a difference between explicitly stated as in, oh, yeah, there was a shot of the guy getting high versus, you know, the constant reminder for dumb people that is in a lot of media in the United States. Like, you show the guy hitting the little guy, and it says, I hit you, you little guy, so there's no way you can miss it, right? As opposed to, we watch a lot of animes, right? You know, you watch Utena, and it's like, yeah, they showed it to you for like a second. And if you weren't paying attention because you have no attention span, you would have missed it. And, you know, if you weren't actually, you know, focusing on the action and looking at all the things on the screen, you would have missed that. So, you know, because they didn't hammer it into people and they don't have attention spans, they don't have focus, they miss things that aren't repeated or really focused on and highlighted with, you know, big spotlights on them, right? So any movie that doesn't have all those things or book or anything like that, a lot of people just miss those things. And then they say, it made no sense. Well, it made sense to me, just like Evangelion and Utena make perfect sense to me. I know exactly what's going on, right? There's no ambiguity like, ooh, I, I can explain any scene. I will tell you what's going on, right? But a lot of people are like, it makes no sense. Well, there are things out there that make no sense. These aren't them. Yep, well, I guess that's my point. The things that people say made no sense were actually the things that were the most obvious. And 
I would have a lot more respect for these criticisms if they actually touched on the things that seem more legitimately confusing yeah, or poorly done. Anything like, that's not perfect can be criticized, which is everything. So to but the, that doesn't mean well, in general, nerds, I see pe- nerds in general seem to mess up two things when they try to critique something that they like or that they hate. One, they they confuse not liking a character with the character being well represented. Well, I mean. Pretty much, it's the same I mean, thing we've been discussing for 10 billion years. They don't like Katniss in uh, the book Hunger Games, but really what they're saying is, I don't like teenage girls, and I don't want to read about what a teenage girl's doing, which is fine. That means you don't like Hunger Games because you don't like that kind of story, that kind of character, this but is, it doesn't mean that is not an accurate representation of that character well presented. I'm just saying, this is the same thing we've discussed a billion years, a billion times, that people will never not figure out, and that will, that is what separates people who can validly critique something and people who can't, is people who can separate their personal feelings from their evaluation of a thing. No matter what that thing is or what category it is, you just go on the internet and you find people arguing about anything, a video game, a book, a movie, right? And people will, 99 times out of a jillion, well... 99.9. You keep up in the ante on these numbers here. Yeah, the overwhelming majority of the time, all you know, almost 100% of the time, somebody, if they like the thing, they will argue the thing is good, and if they don't like the thing, they will argue that it is not good. Right? What was funny is I remember when because I said... Because people cannot separate their personal when feelings. When I said in the forum that Avengers was okay... People acted like I told them that their puppy is a bad puppy and I'm going to kill it, and then I actually killed right. their puppy. They have personal feelings for Avengers, and therefore they, you know, got good feelings in their body when they watched the movie. They, you know, they had good emotions. They <laughs> no, felt. No, 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 Scott, I got to get a point. The way the way you present, you know, we we have the same argument. You present it in a somewhat more caustic fashion. Which What's is caustic what, about this? I don't know. You 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 phrase people this. watch people watch a thing or read a thing or yeah. whatever. And they feel good. It gives them good feelings. It scratches their itch. They like it. They enjoy it. Therefore, they say that makes the thing good. That is not the case, right? I get good feelings watching initial now, Scott, date. There's, there's it an is unspoken. Bad. You're making an unspoken argument that you are there for the Overmesh. That is no. I'm making an unspoken there. argument. The unspoken argument is that I have the ability to separate my personal feelings. Like I said. From evaluating things, and many people, if they have that <laughs> ability, do not exhibit Scott, it. Scott, what you when basically said is, things. "I'm smarter than everyone, and you're all stupid." It's a lot of people, most people are stupid. Everybody knows that. <laughs> I'm just saying. And that, I'm, I'm just saying. saying I'm, I'm just saying. A tangential I have, there point. is an ability that I have, uh, and other that, people have not demonstrated to me that they also have this ability. I'm just making a tangential point that this is why we can both say the same argument in the same thread, and people will disagree with you and agree with me, even though we said the exact same thing. So how would you word that differently that is not, but you, but also say the same thing? I would word it mostly the way I was wording it before. Talk a lot more about the ideas of valid and invalid criticism and what they mean and what people get out of a movie without directly impinging upon the perceived intelligence of the people. But why? What is that? I didn't say anything of anyone's intelligence. It I just was, said there is was, an ability that I have. <laughs> are you saying that lack? You're the one implying that if someone does indeed lack that ability, that they are unintelligent. I just don't coach. You're you making a logical of, leap there. No, you are I, also uh, Scott. However, I'm pointing out that if you are arguing with other people mm-hmm. or discussing something in a Buzz Aldrin fashion for the benefit of other people, you have to take into account the way they will likely interpret your words. If they cannot interpret words properly, maybe that that is why they are upset because they have discovered the truth that they are less intelligent. But at the same time, that is if why... If they were intelligent, as they claim, right? Because you shouldn't be insulted by someone calling you dumb if you are not if you are dumb, because then it's true. You can't be insulted by the truth. You should only be insulted if you're actually not dumb, right? And someone called you dumb. Then there's a reason to be insulted. So... If you aren't dumb, you should be able to interpret those words properly. Wouldn't you say so? And if you interpreted those words properly, you wouldn't be insulted by them. I have no comment because I have a vested interest in maintaining my ability to convince people of the exact same things you want to without hitting that shield or that barrier <laughs> that you inevitably you're like a Klingon ship coming into an argument and the captain's the other like thing, what the fuck is that shields all the way up right they see me they're like oh crazy alien also, dude come right on my ship also I never actually said the people lack the ability that uh, I have you, didn't ha- you don't have to I say that the people have not demonstrated their possession of this <laughs> ability right and if they get upset by that and make the logical leap to, to that they don't have the ability and that therefore they are dumb if they make that logical leap they are then not, aren't they, admitting they don't have the ability. 
perhaps, however, simply by are they not the recognized? And and the thing is, they also Friends, never make a movement. They also never argue that I do not have the ability. <laughs> no one ever tries to do that. They tr they never try to do that. Nor do they try to prove that they do have the ability. Or they don't even discuss that at all. Luckily, they just they just humbly admit. It's like they silently admit that I'm right, and then just say, you're insulting me. You have to come it's in, <laughs> no, you have to come in with the self-deprecation first. You do something like, like what you need I'm to do better more than often. I have an ability you don't have? No, you need to come in <laughs> earlier with the, I like Initial D, Initial D is a terrible show. If yeah, you, I come out with that all the time. You gotta come that out with is it the more evidence strongly. that I have the ability. Is that Remember, you have to frame the debate in terms of your own self-deprecation in order to make other people lower their shields, and then you can worm the point in. But anyway, I say to you, good sir, what is your news today, Thursday, in the lounge? So finally, uh, we finally. Got, yeah, we got some big movement here, right? Because, you know, pretty much one of the number one things troubling, especially nerd communities, if not the whole internet community <laughs> these days. <laughs> other than arguments on the internet exactly is the accessibility of video programming particularly television programming right? wait a minute wait a minute you're you, this what news are you doing because i had my backup news of why everyone's pirating game of thrones mine is related but not that news okay okay anyway go on go on so you know and it, it is the whole hbo thing with the game of thrones right let's just tie the news together okay because we did we just talked about something else uh, so fine, and you know, there's the Hulu and Netflix are gimped because the cable company's got to lock in, yep. and like you can watch stuff on your Xbox or your PC, but only if you have pay for cable and log in with your cable login. Like you can watch ESPN on your Xbox if you pay for ESPN on your cable, which is like, well, then what the fuck do I need it on my Xbox? But what's interesting is All that you're I doing would be is letting me use my Xbox as a cable box. But as we know, you know, for that case, I would be perfectly willing to pay for just ESPN without cable. Right. And it's like, oh, yeah, you can pay for just baseball, but uh, on your phone, which I did one or two years in a row when I got first got the iPhone 3G, right? Yeah. You can't get Mets games because we're going to use the GPS. We found out that you're in New York, so we're going to block all New York games. It's like, well, then why the fuck did I pay 10 bucks? For this app, if I can only watch freaking Seattle Mariners and Milwaukee Brewers, I only care about the fucking Mets, but you're using the GPS to figure out that I'm in New York, and if I don't let you activate the GPS, you won't let me watch anything. Meanwhile, if I don't pay and I just do a pirate stream, I can see everything just fine. Yeah. So, anyway, there's, you know, there's this whole thing that, you know, we everyone knows this topic, right? Yeah. Uh, so, the Department of Justice finally is doing something. It's right? my favorite department. I know. Justice. Other than uh, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. Justice. She's got a blindfold over her eyes. She's really good at magical drop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she knows how, th how much things weigh. It always gets it even. Anyway, so uh, what they're doing is they're going after, you know, Comcast, Time Warner, et cetera, but, you know, everybody, saying, hey, we're going to try to see if you're doing any antitrust business trying to gimp competition from Hulu, Netflix, et cetera, on purpose to, you know, keep with your cable monopoly, right? Survey cable, says yes. Right. So cable is a monopoly, right? And it's sort of, you know, it's one of the, right? Well, and it's the, a local monopoly. Like right. It's a well, vertical monopoly in a local area. Right. It's a monopoly. And the, the rule, the law in the U.S. is not that you are not allowed to have a monopoly. YKK has a monopoly on zippers. They are allowed to have a monopoly on zippers, right? Microsoft Windows is allowed to have a monopoly on operating systems, right? What is illegal is to use your monopoly power in one area to thwart competition, right? Because if you have a monopoly on zippers, like YKK does, right? If I try to compete in the zipper department, I'm going to take them on. They're not allowed to use the advantages they have of being the existing monopoly. Like saying, if you ever buy another zipper from another company, we're going to not let you buy any YKK zippers again. Right. They, so if there's a, you know, Uniqlo wants to buy zippers from me, Right, YKK could be like, well, we're not going to sell you any of our zippers if you buy theirs, and you know they only want to buy some of ours and some of theirs. They're not allowed to do that. Like when Intel was like, Dell, you got to buy Intel chip. You're not allowed to do that. Oh right? my God, that that was right around the era when I really hated Intel. And or I went you know, AMD. and Microsoft is like Windows. You can't be like, well, we're going to make sure we're going to use our Windows monopoly to get Internet Explorer everywhere. Not allowed to do that. So. Basically, what they're saying is, hey, these people with the cable monopoly are using their cable monopoly to prevent competition no. from Netflix, Hulu, etc. No. <laughs> so the Department of Justice is investigating, but most specifically, they're investigating the bandwidth limiting, right? It's like, oh, well, if you have like an AT&T mobile phone, the 
the using ABC's video app doesn't contribute to the bandwidth cap, but using Netflix does, giving your existing monopoly on, you know, an advantage of, you know, no, all right? And this is what Comcast, when they merged with NBC, specifically agreed not to do. Yeah, guys, so because neutrality. They, so that's why they're honing in on this one specific <sighs> usage you know, because that's one that they have on paper somewhere that they can really nail them on if they discover that it has, in fact, been done. And you can pretty much guarantee it has. So let's see how big the balls of the Department of Justice are. Uh, and maybe the FCC can bring back the a la carte cable and et cetera, et cetera. The thing is, a la carte cable is 15 years too late. I'm just saying, but we could maybe get, right, what they should have. I don't even know why. See, I don't know why the cool cable companies don't do this, right? We know why the stuffy ones don't do it, right? Why HBO- Name a cool cable company. Right. So we know why. H- Name one. A cool cable channel? Yeah, cable company. No, no. I'm talking about channels. Okay. Name why a cool cable channel that isn't HBO or Showtime. Isn't Comedy Central it's pretty cool, right? Even though it's owned by Viacom, which is not cool. Yep. But cable cent- Comedy Central itself is cool. But I, actually, though, my trouble with Comedy Central is that most of the programming for the last, I don't know, Ten years, I've not cared about. No. Like really, the only things I like on Comedy Central are South Park and The Daily Show. Right. And The Daily Show web app has possibly the second most annoying advertising scheme in the world. That's also broken. But what I'm saying is, like, look, the Comedy Central is already cool enough to let you watch South Park Daily Show just on their website. I have a feeling that Perf- Daily Show and South Park are only there like that. Because those two peop- particular shows, yeah, no, not just those, yeah, those shows. The people who make them have a lot of independent power and cachet. Right. Trey Parker and Matt Stone can basically go to Comedy Central and say, "Look, we will fuck you if you fuck with us." Right. But anyway, I don't know why, for example, Comedy Central or some other cable channel that actually has viewers as opposed to the ones that don't have viewers, like Lifetime. Dolphin, right. Uh, says. Go to ComedyCentral.com. There's a video player right there, and you can watch street live streaming Comedy Central 24-7. It's the exact same thing that's on our channel on TV. You don't need cable anymore. Just come to our website. Fuck all the cable companies. And if every channel did that, right, independently... Well, one, it's better for the advertisers. The problem is, is this exact monopolistic antitrust practice is, you know, you have the, the companies that own the cable... Right, cable vision also owns cable channels like MSG. They don't want to just let you watch Ranger games on the computer because then you won't also, you know, pay them in a di- you know they get the advertising from that which they already get on MSG. But in addition, they're getting money from you every month to pay for the cable vision. If they they basically just doing what we want them to do, which is go to MSG.com, watch Ranger games. Is basically just throwing away all the money that they get from people subscribing to well, cable. Well, this is a problem that Sony has had for a long time. That mm-hmm. when you've got multiple, you know, you're a big enough company to where you have multiple arms. Any company in the modern world who is into both distribution of content and creation of content that isn't just completely independent has these weird sort of conflict of interest within themselves where if one wing of the company does well, it'll basically destroy the other wing of the company. Right. If I were the heads of these companies, I would be rapidly trying to spin off all the legacy stuff. I would spin off the networks on their own and get the content creation separate, and I would stay on the content creation boat. Right. Well, see, that's the one thing I don't understand is that... Does no one in any of these companies realize this? Well, no. This is the thing I don't get is that, you know, there's only like six media companies, really, right? But you would think that if one company of the six went for it and said, we're going to sacrifice our old shitty distribution business, just let it peter out, right? And we're just going to put all our content online the modern way... That that one, right, even though it would have a temporary setback in revenues, right, of people bailing and just, you know, watching online, whatever, right, would gain favor from the peoples, of course. Oh, they would gain advertising money of the wazoo. Right. I actually said wazoo. That's how much money I think it right. would involve. They would gain money from people just paying them for their shows directly, which is what people want to do, you know, the good shows at least, right? And three... All of the other companies now would be at a competitive disadvantage, and that one awesome company would be getting newer, better content. You so, know, Scott, I think it comes down buzz. to the fact that these are large companies, right? Mm-hmm. In any large company, there's a lot of momentum, yep. and there are people who carve out tiny little empires. 
So the guy in the company who has a lot of power, but is his boat is completely tied to the old legacy shit. It's got to, it has to come from the guys at the top who have the most power. Who and, just... uh, and the least vision in these cases. Yeah, yep. But anyway. I mean, look, I work for a small company, and basically the heads of the company every day are like, what can we do this crazy? What should we do? Let's, let's fuck everything over and start. Let's just go crazy. They want, they, they're pushing faster than I would push. Meanwhile, the big, you know, big companies, you know, I used to work at IBM. It, basically, there is so much momentum. But that, it, right, but it makes you think these six, seven media companies are competing with each other theoretically. But no, it they're makes also you, they're collaborating. Right, it's the only way this you, could th- still it's, be. It's clearly collusion, which is also illegal. Because if there wasn't collusion, some of them would pick orange, right? And cut out and be like, all right, we're gonna bail. You know, I don't think Viacom owns. You know, Time Warner owns cable. NBC Comcast has regular cable. I don't think Viacom. I think Viacom just has content. Do they own a cable operator? I'm not sure. RCN? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't right? know. We, so we, that's we'd the, have to do that's a the, separate show on this I with know. investigative we journalism. I know. We can research that. But one, you know, one of them that only does content you know, could. You know, Fox News Corp has you know, cable and whatever, right? Yeah, well, look at this. If, if, I, if, mm. if you didn't think about the corporate uh, relationships... HBO is probably the best positioned as a I think creator. That's, I think that's owned by it's also, owned by Time Warner. Yeah, but here's the thing: HBO, if it were its own thing, still, it would be able to basically be the one that does that, and they would probably. But do the great. guy who runs HBO, he's on video. People have asked him this stuff, and he's just he's the oldest thinking fuddy duddy. Well, HBO is owned by Time Warner, and Time Warner would get fucked. If HBO destroyed the old model. Mm. But I think HBO as a network could single handedly destroy the old model. Possibly. Uh, I think they're the I think they're actually the only ones who have That's that. That's the one right that now. people are pushing for the most because they have the shows. Well, that was the want. article I was thinking about talking about that I decided not to bother with because we had plenty of news that Game of Thrones is possibly the most pirated television show in history. Yeah, that's old news. Yeah, but we, we talked about that before. We only talked about it tangentially. There's an article that really goes into like who's pirating it and why and People in countries who can't get it, mostly people who don't want to pay for HBO, and there's no. no there's no legal way to get it without paying for cable. But that's so much money; it's not worth it. Well, you can buy DVDs. Yeah, you can't get the DVDs as soon as it comes out, nope. the day of the show comes out. And the thing is, you know, six or seven years ago, we'd be at convention saying that live is dead because other than sports, live was and yeah. You know, I mean, news. I'm I'm the person who doesn't care. I could wa- like if I want to watch Game of Thrones, I haven't watched it at all yet. I downloaded the first season. I'll watch it sometime. You should watch it. It's good. Uh, eventually, I'll check it out because how can I not? It's so hyped. How can I not at least check it out, right? But I'm in no rush. But these people, it's like they're obsessed. They got to see it as soon as it comes well, out. Well, because it's remember when we were reading The Prince of Nothing in the crew. Yep. All the people who weren't reading it basically were shunned from at least half of our conversations. Nah, I just, whatever. I and read before, it when I read I read, it. before I read it, I remember everyone else who had read it in the first wave would be talking about, and he stepped into the circle inscribed by his sword. But and meanwhile, like, when I eventually got around to reading it, there was plenty of discussing. Uh, that was only because there was a second simultaneous wave. There is a certain social currency... You know, in the old days, remember, there weren't no, that, there weren't that many disagree. shows. Like, Dick Van Dyke would right. be on TV, and literally everyone saw it. And the next day in the office and at school, everyone had seen the same thing and had that to talk about. Now, it's fractured, but it's starting to come back. And look at nerds. Ponies happens. The next day, every nerd who watched Ponies talks about ponies. That's true. But, you know, while I can see that, right, personally— I'm not saying it's that important to you or me. I'm saying that there is, right. there is serious social currency in seeing something— early in the cycle right. so that you can then discuss it and be part of the internet mashup uh, free-for-all. Let me insult people again, indirectly. About what? If you're doing the spoilers thing, I no, disagree with you. Was your not, show nothing with it. spoilers. All right, all right. It's that you look at someone like me, right? Um, well, I'm, I'm totally hipster and nerdy, right? I'm reading things no one else is reading and watching things no one else is watching, right? And then when I come over, I know you didn't watch every episode of Running Man. I talk about it anyway, right? I'm just like, whatever. I don't need to talk about the thing that you've also seen. I'll just talk about the thing that I've seen, right? But if and you notice, if you if you've seen something I haven't seen, I don't mind if you talk about the thing I haven't uh, Scott, seen. It's actually that's, more interesting. Scott, that's it, not even close to the argument I'm making. But I'm saying it's more interesting if you talk about the thing I haven't seen. So I don't need that. Everyone has seen the same thing. Let's see. So you say it. no, Scott. You say that, but it's not if they're talking about the jargon of the thing that then it doesn't make any sense. Mm, possibly, if it's a thing with jargon. And two, all I'm saying is that for the majority of people, and us included, 
there is social currency to being in with whatever the thing is. So if it's good and you want to consume it, you get more out of it. It's kind of like buying the laptop on day one as opposed to day 100 if the price doesn't drop. Mm -hmm. If you buy it on day one, you got a better deal than on day 100 because otherwise you got 100 less days and paid the same amount of money. You pay the same amount of time to get the media, but if you get it when other people are in the getting, there's more immediate like payback on that in the term in the form of social currency. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. That's a bigger calculation, though, because you also got to wonder what other media could you have been consuming at that time, right? So um, yeah, did, did, if you sat... What, what? Scott, that's a bigger calculation because yeah, we have saying. to talk about the entropy of the universe caused by my brain consuming the thing and the electrons moving around. So. That's right. It's like, you know, uh, I could consume that right away and I get this bonus, but that means I'm not doing this other thing and t t today is today. Who knows what's going on today? That might mean not biking because it's good weather in the summer. I'll wait till the winter to watch it. Which is coming, right? The thing that's, is, that's a Game of Thrones joke. Look at right? how this works. <laughs> Everyone, I see. I can get the joke. I haven't even watched one minute of the show. Why is winter a big deal? I'm curious. Because there's a guy who says winter is coming, and that means it's going to be cold, and it's medieval times, so it sucks when it's cold, and that it's, means it's going to everyone's got to stay inside and be trapped with and have sex. That's pretty much it, except winter lasts like 20 years. Oh, it's and it's a medieval world. I thought it was only medieval world. I didn't realize it was fantasy. It's world. medieval world where, because of the way the planets work, w there's like five years of summer and then some number of years of winter. Oh, see, I thought. See, I was not aware that I, that it was that winter is coming. Is a word. Yeah, I thought it was a only. Scott, this dragon. It's it's prince of nothing. But, but are all, there wizards? Uh, yes, but they're far away. Oh, but they are. There are. Uh, see, I thought it was just sort of slightly fantasy, like well, you know, it, sort of like King Arthur, right? It's a little. Scott, bit of fantasy. it is in that everything the show focuses on is the slightly fantasy, but there's big fantasy, like right on the edges, like epic level D and D fantasy. It's out there. It's, it's out coming. there, but it's not where you the know when it's coming, is. Scott. When winter comes in season four, season five, <laughs> season thousand, wizards are gonna fly in on dragons, casting spells. I have no faith that the show is gonna go anywhere, just because I know where the books have gone. Magic rings, and the books aren't going anywhere either. Anyway, it's gonna be wheel of time. Let's move on. So anyway, things of the day. So we were watching this video of a bunch of models falling over, and it was funny. It was funny, but it was also kind of sad. So to get the taste out of our mouths, we watch a video of a bunch of guys opening beer bottles in a manly fashion. And it was actually a surprisingly enjoyable video. They do a lot of repeats, but it's good. But there were no actual repeats. Everyone was crooked slightly so. But it was like... There were like three machetes. What are you talking about? They were differently shaped machetes. They weren't the same machete. I think I saw the same machete no, you a few didn't. times. Plus there was like monkey wrench, other kind of wrench. Uh-huh. So here's a little funny... I like how some of them don't work. Here's a similar short and funny video. This guy is in Russia... Right, and he pulls up next to some Russian police, uh, and he notices that the the policeman in the car is not wearing a seatbelt and is talking on his cell phone. So he's like, "Hey, hey!" and he yells at the police officers to roll down the window, and he tells them, "Hey, put your seatbelt on and turn the phone off." Right, regulation number, whatever, whatever. And it, it's pretty funny. The look on the cop's face because he can't and really it says say in Soviet, anything. It says in Russia, police obeys you. The policeman's just like. I can't even yell at this guy. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, it's like when you get I caught wish you could get something. away with this in New York. Like, hey. I would be actually kind of afraid to do that in New I York. I know, right? I really even just the, Even avoid. if there was like a really nice cop, if I saw him doing something, like, you know, like if he was, had no seatbelt and he looked really nice and friendly and was smiling, I might, maybe I could get away with like, hey, man, dude, uh, seatbelt. Thing is, I, I take to to heart the advice we got from that thing. The thing the is, that a couple smile years ago, could turn into a frown in like one flash of a second. The rule number one of getting by in life is, if you can avoid it, don't engage yourself with police officers or ever. really low life people. Yeah, as or in we did a whole show. Crazy, on that. crazy bum. When that crazy guy uh, tried to punch me while I was riding my bike in Beacon. Yeah, do not like, get what, involved with ago? any crazy bums. <laughs> well, well, you know, it's more simple. Never get involved with the police. Or anyone who has nothing to lose or the perception of nothing to lose. That's right. All right, Meta Moment. Meta Moment. The book club book is... 1Q84. Q84. However you want to say it. It's, uh, we're, I'm about done with it. I got to read like the last 100 pages maybe. Yep. Maybe. It's, uh, it's pretty good. It's a good book. You should read it. It wouldn't be the book club book if it was not good. There wouldn't be hundreds of people reading it on the subway every goddamn day yeah. if it wasn't any good, right? The thing is, I'm a little... I like it a lot. I mean, it's long enough to where that if it was just a fad, people would like read the beginning and it, you know, and stop. But people are like finishing it on the subway, which means they're, you know, they're still reading it. 
What? How do you know? You're watching people like finish it on the I subway? I see what page they're on. Ah. Yeah. The thing is, it's a book where I start reading. I'm like, okay, where, where is this going? Oh, crazy murder. Okay. Maybe it's about that. Little people. Little what? people. Ears. What do they mean by little people? What's up with the ear? Oh. Little people. Little people. Two moons. <laughs> 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 Fucking little people. That's right. The thing is... It's one of those things where I kind of expected, like, oh, little people will be little people. And then sure enough, yep. somehow I was like, what, really? Yeah. All, uh, our other new meta news, Kineticon. Coming up real soon. Too Schedules soon. Schedules mostly online. I got to tweak it a little bit. Uh, panelists are too bailed on me. I'm going to be filling in some extra panels. Uh, Kineticon is going to be awesome. If you want to work at Kineticon and do, like, volunteer whatnots, you can talk to me or the Kineticon volunteer department. I will say this, though. If you want to help out, and you talk to us first and then them, and you're cool, we will make your job easy because I think it'll have yeah, more you don't fun. Yeah, re- we don't really need people to work incredibly long. Basically, all we need is like two people on, maybe two or three people at all times on shift, right? And even at late night, maybe even less people, probably like one or two people at night uh, when there's less traffic, just so that there is someone in the hallways and somebody checks on every panel to make sure it starts. And if a panel has a problem, they have somebody to ask for technical help and yeah, all someone to go into the panel room and say, hey, you have five minutes left, get out. All that. Manage a line if a panel's really popular. It is your chance to... Actually, you'll probably... If you volunteer and help us out at Kineticon, you will probably hang out with us more than you can at any other convention we ever go to. And you'll put something on your resume. Uh, uh, guys, look at my LinkedIn. College kids. I actually put Oticon and Kineticon on my actual for real yeah, resume. Yeah, and all you got to do is word it right. You got to be like, Kineticon Panels Operations Specialist. Well, well... Depends. You got. We pick your title. I'm just saying. Yeah. You can. You know. You make up something that's. Well, know, what are we? I, we're uh, the directors of panels and workshops. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, other meta. But it news. is July 13th, 14th, and 15th in Hartford, Connecticut. And if you want to go to Connecticut, I would not fly across the country to go to Connecticut. It's but not worth lived, a fly across the country. If I lived within it's several hours, it's a relatively hours, small to medium-ish con. Seven thousand ish unique, so about turnstile ish seventeen thousand, give or take. Yeah, it's an everything con, and we're it's not excel- kidding. The board game library is better than any board game library at any convention I have ever been. That includes both Magfest. I'm and sure PAX. there are some that are better, maybe like Essen or that you know uh, gathering of friends or something, but. To reiterate I ever, what I just I said. I personally have ever been. Did I not just say PAX? I'm not kidding. It has much better board gaming than PAX. It does have better board gaming than PAX. There's Both no, PAXs. Yes, all PAXs. It does not, however, have an arcade like MAGFest. No. But there are panels on everything. We've got, it is an everything con. It's not one of those cons. It's like we're an anime con, and then people get pissed because they have a panel about some video games. We got a lot of anime. Kineticon is an everything geeky con. It makes That's what it calls itself, everything and the ki- but the kitchen sink. If you have a geekery, whether it's furriness or music or cosplay or animes or mangas or comics or Video Sword games, fighting, technology, belly dancing, dancing, juggling. We have multiple parkour, people airsoft. running airsoft parkour juggling events. Right. No matter what your nerdery is, sci fi, it is at Kineticon. So also, if you John are, St. John's coming back. Yeah. If you are in, I'd say if you're in New England, maybe Maine is too far, uh, or New York. And if you're maybe northern New, Ju- northern New Jersey, Jersey of, northern of, uh, Pennsylvania, Hartford, Connecticut. Yeah, then it's worth going. If you're farther away than that, if you have to, if you can't drive there in a day, in a few hours, then it's not worth it. But otherwise, it is, and you should go. Yep. And it's not gonna like it's gonna sell out. Pax Prime, Pax Dev, those are coming up. We'll be in talking about New what we'll Labor probably day. be doing there. Uh, not going to Otakon, obviously, but if you want, if you guys go, tell us how it goes, and if you want us to go, tell them that you want us to be there. And lastly, our website has been recently updated, and yep. is, and more updates are coming down the line, which reminds me, we're going to add the video section maybe today, after that we finish the show. Ah. Uh, you should go to our website, and this cool, it's now better, but if you don't like our website, and I can see why you might not like websites, they're kind of old-fashioned. The website automatically pushes everything to Facebook, Google+, Twitter, and we're going to even Because add- remember, unlike 
everyone else. We actually don't try to make money off of this. So, yeah, so uh, we just want to push our content everywhere it can be pushed. I'm even thinking of making a Geek Nights Reddit that everything will get posted there as a link and also making a Geek Nights Tumblr and just, just pushing everything everywhere so that no matter where you Fucking like, everybody in everybody's right, room. So no matter fucking where backyard, you like to be fish tank, on the internet, deep in other people, Geek Nights is available there. iTunes, we're available everywhere. And uh, so, Except to again. <laughs> that's right. So you, if you like us and you're listening to the show, you should go to your favorite place on the internet and follow, like, grab, subscribe, whatever it is you do to us. Pinterest, I guess. I still don't even know what Pinterest, uh, Pinterest is. We can, Pinterest is basically delicious that looks different and organizes differently. So just use delicious like I do. <laughs> delicious has been really slow lately. Really? I haven't had At a problem. At least for me. All right, so 45 minutes later, it's time to talk about hats. That's good because I intentionally did that because we don't have that much to say about hats. I feel like I could do a long show on hats. Well, okay, so let's start with this, right? Uh, I have no hair anymore, really. I have some hair. but And I point out, during the uh, Five Borough Bike Tour, you got... One, two, you got eight sunburns on your head in the places where there are holes in your bicycle helmet. Yeah, I've corrected that now. <laughs> uh, I need a hat, but I can't find a hat that's a good style. And every style of hat I see, either A, isn't for me personally, as my, my body doesn't match it. Well, for it, example, or like our friend B, Adam. my clothes don't match it. Like, I would totally do, like, 20s, 30s awesome hat, but that would mean I'd need to wear 20s, 30s Suit maybe with a vest every day, and you know what? It's warm. Or, no, you, you got linen. Linen is the key. It doesn't go with that kind of hat. Yeah, it really. does. A linen jacket. No, the linen goes with, like, the, the straw hat, you know, the Panama hat with the red, white, and blue no, thing around no, the middle. No, Scott, there's a long tradition of Italian businessmen wearing these sort of, like, linen suits while they're going around You know, the Saturdays. kind of hat you throw up in the air at a parade? That's Actually, not a good Scott, hat for me to wear either, You know though. you could wear? What? Stovepipe. Not wearing a stovepipe. Why not? Hat. It's not going to look too Just good. Just do it. No. Just own it. Double down. No. What's funny is when I was young, like before I had long hair, like I was just a punk kid, like I was really young, I hated wasting time in the morning on things like brushing my hair. Like I remember that was a thing. Like I didn't want to bother with stuff like that. I definitely still don't want to bother with stuff like that. So I pretty much always wanted to wear a baseball cap just because that meant I didn't have to do anything. I wore, see, we weren't allowed to wear a baseball cap in, in school. Nor were we, but we could wear them so, in the hallways. And so wait, it. so I didn't bring one to school and didn't wear one because I'd usually just lose it. But when I got to high school, the rule changed in high school. In high school, you could wear it, just not in class, right? So in class, I'd just take it off and put it on the table. And I started like freshman year of high school, up through freshman year of college, I just wore Mets hat every day. Non, I just always had the Mets hat on yep. everywhere I went. I pretty much wore baseball caps every time I was like going around it, yeah, it, outside, it, unless until when I was in tenth grade, I got what I affectionately called the stupid hat. It was this sort of like bucket hat, like a sort of Panama style, but really crappy and smaller. I pretty much wore that up until I lost it at RIT mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah, I wore that Mets hat up till freshman year at RIT, and then sophomore year I sort of just stopped. I don't remember why. Of course, RIT, you know, I'll, I'll dig up a picture to link to for this episode, but it's funny because right around my senior year of high school when I got to RIT, you know, I had a bunch of, like, I wore a brown duster everywhere because it was winter in Rochester and fucking one degree and freezing. And a duster is not only a coat, but it's also basically a portable bed and portable pillow. <laughs> And a portable backpack because I could fit everything Blanket. I needed in the pockets. Yeah. So I would use I wear like pajamas under it and wear it to class and curl up in the library and use this blanket or a bed or whatever. It's the same thing that always happens, right? Is if you're a freshman in high school, you're sporting middle school style for a while, and when yep. you're a freshman in college, you're sporting high school style for a while, and then you grow out of it. But the thing is, in college, I didn't do that in in high school. It was only really. And when then I when you get out of college to the real world, you're sport college style for a while, and then you get turned into adult. Yeah, <laughs> but I would. It got to you know at RIT, I had the duster and I wore it a lot because it was cold. And unlike the rest of my life, I didn't have a car to just drive everywhere. So I started wearing the duster all the time. And what goes better with the duster than a, a leather cowboyish hat? Yep. So I was actually you know for a couple of years at RIT, the majority of the people who saw me, the majority of the time. I had a duster and a cowboy hat on. I looked, and I had a huge mustache. I looked very different from how I do now, in terms of style. Mm -hmm. I wore that cowboy hat like every goddamn day. Like every picture of me at RIT. That's I got how this you can always find rim. It was easy to find. You the always... thing is, 
Just no this one... brown stick walking around. Yep, but no one could call me Tex because we knew a guy called Tex. Yeah, that, he's the only Tex as yeah. far as I'm concerned. If anyone had called me Tex, I think he would have killed me, just to make sure. Maybe. So one day, I'm sitting in the uh, RIT cafeteria. But I mean, you didn't have a 10-gallon cowboy hat. It was no. more of like an Australian It was like an outback kind of, outback kind like of I'm on the bush wrangling horses hat. Yeah, but darker brown than, you know, uh, like Crocodile Dundee. It looked a lot like what's-his-name's hat in uh, Final Fantasy... Eight? No, wasn't it Star Ocean? No, Final Fantasy Eight. Uh, whatever. The the sniper guy. I I didn't actually play Final. Yeah, Fantasy sort of like 8. a grit hat. Yeah, the grit doesn't wear a hat in Advance Wars too. That's true. Yeah. Anyway, really, so I, actually, really, you look. You were, you were very grit style. I was because yeah. I I was always kind of unshaven, so I had that kind of grit. You didn't like, have the pointy the pointy Jigen beard though. No, I had the uh, epic. You know, uh, grit mustache. And, you know, grit and Jigen, same actor. I. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say playing Advance Wars 2 again great as hex I should go watch the Lupons I haven't seen I haven't caught up on them either alright so I wore this hat like all the time like that was just I was known as wearing that hat and uh one day we're eating lunch or dinner or dinner. something in Gracie's the cafeteria and out of nowhere someone from behind like like on this balcony like above where we were eating grabs the hat off my head and runs away and I look, I'm dumbfounded. Like, I can't believe this yeah, happened. Yeah, you think it's just like a practical joke. Like, lol's got your hat, dude. Like, I can't believe this happened. And I assume it's someone I know. And then our friend Greg looks at me. He's like, I think that guy just fucking stole your hat. So he had to chase and him. And I look up, and the guy just keeps running. Like, he's almost out of the cafeteria. I'm like, fuck. So I get up and run. And then, like, Greg follows me. And, like, part of the crew just start following me. There's, like, this chain of people. And I get outside. And I, I, and I, the guy would have gotten away, but he stopped. He's just walking. And right behind him, I grab his shoulder and spin around. I'm like, give me my hat back. And he was deaf. Mm. And he looks at me like I'm stupid. He's like, what? And I point at the hat. I'm like, my hat. And he doesn't want to give it back to me. And I'm, I'm debating threatening him when other people start to show up and suddenly got this posse behind me. I'm like, give me the fucking hat back. And I grab it from him. And he kind of stands there, but then he backs down. And I walk back into the cafeteria like a hero, and I resume eating. No what one I, even. What I assume was it, was it was not like a clapping or it was just like no, no, just no. walking back in. Take but I was a hero to me because I got to my you. hat back. You're hero to you only because I still got that hat. Yeah. But uh, the problem is later the hat shrunk. It doesn't fit my head anymore. <laughs> I think your head grew. <laughs> I don't think I think my head's already pretty big. Your inflated sense of self worth. <laughs> Hot air. I just couldn't believe someone stole my hat. Man. Off my head. What would they want with it? Were they dared to do it? What was I don't that know. Even? It wasn't even someone I knew. It was a random deaf kid. <laughs> I never saw him again on campus. Whatever. Yeah, uh, what else we got to say about hats? Uh, I like, you know, you watch old movies, you see everyone wearing a hat, and you think, yeah, I wish we could go back to the days and everyone wear a hat and was styling. But at the same time, I can't even get there myself. So, so I can't Scott, really you know blame those, anyone else for not getting there. You know those derby style canes? Like when people have a walking cane, it has like the thing you hold on to. Yeah, like, like the Johnny Walker label. And there's on like the alcohol. A, and there's like a little hook on the front of it. Yep. You know that's what that's to put for? Put your hat on. Yeah, so you, you hang it over your arm and then you hang the hat on the hook. That that's way your right. arm is free. That's right. I, I see more and more people like whenever I'm around the theater district or whenever I go to a show or something, there's a lot of people sporting that kind of look again in New York. Yeah, at a formal event, you could totally do it. But it's like, to wear that every day is a expensive, b warm. Yeah, well, I'm C, already expensive. I'm already having the problem if I wear like a, a jacket like every day. Like I dress up nice, and uh, as a result, now I own like 14 jackets, and I get dry cleaning done constantly, and it's actually really expensive. And I've worn out two jackets. Yeah, it's not just expensive to buy them, right? That's like a one-time cost, a few thousand dollars. Yeah, most people you, know. you own a jacket, you own like two jackets. It's, you got to dry clean all that shit constantly. Instead of regular laundry. Well, that's something I've so learned. So it costs just as much to wear the suit for one day as it costs for like a whole basket of regular t-shirts. When I was younger, I never paid much attention to the formal attire other people wore. But now, because I wear jackets all the time, I kind of think about it a lot more. And what's funny is like when I go to an event, like a convention, like not a nerd convention, but a more businessy convention, you can pretty much tell someone's profession and income level based solely on literally the cut of their jacket. Yep. And... I got to say, when you see the guy wearing what is clearly the same jacket he wore to his prom, complete with the hole for the boutonniere, boutonniere at a professional convention, that guy is still in college or fresh out of college. He's like the low-level tech guy. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's a coder. Yep. He was forced to go there by his boss. Yep. That has never steered me wrong. Mm -hmm. Lately, I really haven't been wearing hats again anymore. Yeah, it's like I want to wear a hat, but I just can't find a hat. What I don't get, though, is that I see a lot of people in the city 
who are businessmen, but they're like a schlubby, normal, middle-aged, but they're like 45, and they have like a normal job, so they have to, like, they have to dress up as opposed to dressing up because they want to. But they have to dress up in this boring, like, white dress shirt with a particular yeah, jacket. Yeah, why don't away. they go more styling? If you if I had to dress up, but I didn't quit the job, which I probably would. Yeah, why, just... what, why is it always the, like, the crappy white dress shirt right. with the same cut? It's like I wouldn't take the job in the first place. But if I had to have that job where they force you to dress up, and that's the job I had. To me, a white dress shirt I literally be, exists it's solely like you're for paying weddings. The dry cleaning costs the same no matter how fancy the clothes are, right? It's The jacket's two fifty. It doesn't matter if it's a $1,000 jacket or a $1 Goodwill jacket, right? Dry cleaning is the same. I would get. It doesn't need to be expensive. It would just be styling, right? As opposed to, you know, schlubby. Yeah, but those people, almost. Those I would say people. a good third of them, on the subway are always wearing a really non-matching random baseball cap. Yep. I don't know why. But it bothers me even more than wearing the baseball cap, right, is the people who get the baseball cap with the plastic in the back as opposed to the fitted hat, right? It's like, oh, are you kidding me? Every baseball cap I ever owned had the plastic in the back. Oh, it's awful. Oh, that's the worst. And you know what's even worse than that is when the entire back half of the hat is sort of that mesh. That's only for uh, truckers. Fi- truckers and fishermen are the only people allowed to wear that hat. <laughs> Wait I a minute, it. Scott. Wait a minute. You're the one now who's complaining about other people's fashion. Oh, look at the hat he's wearing. We're la da You can't wear that hat. You can't wear that. You're going to complain about people wearing socks and sandals on the beach next? Uh, you can do that if you're on the beach. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Care about hats. Care about hats. Hats are important. You want your hat back. Because hats protect the head, which is the important part of the body. No, helmets protect the head. The helmets are hats. You want to talk about helmets? No, I think helmets is a separate show. Okay. Because I, I have a bunch of gotta, helmets. You got to squeeze out another episode. <laughs> I got a bunch of helmets. We got to save the helmet anecdotes. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to get a formal hat, but with long hair, like I have to tie it back in a very particular way to wear a nice hat. And because mm. I have a an atypically large head in terms of like measurements, off the shelf hats don't fit me. Like I have to really, I have to spend a lot of money. To that get a is hat. annoying, right? It's like you know, it's hats are one of those things where the more expensive one is clearly superior. It's the same thing with canes, because I was thinking about getting a nice cane to only take when I go to like the theater, like nice jacket, you know, pants, cane, Fake and hat. Mu- you should bring your little mustache. The wooden oh one, my god! The, the mustachical. That, that I love that thing. <laughs> uh, the problem is, I looked at canes. The cheap canes look like shit. The nice looking canes, if they were, I expected like, all right, if I'm crazy and I spend like two hundred bucks, I'll get the best looking cane. Now, mm-hmm. talk two thousand dollars, right, for a good looking cane. Here's what you do, Rim. Right. So the best looking cane, in my guys. Opinion, if you want to make me a cane. Ah, uh, I'll be your friend forever. Right. The best looking cane, in my opinion, is the plain black smooth, you know, thing that tapers to a point at the bottom. Yep. With a little metal tip. And then the metal handle at the top, you know, that's sort of like the sideways handle that you can hang the hat on, right? So what do you want on the That's you all you gotta do. It's so simple. It's not it doesn't have need to it doesn't need to be one of those ones with those all sorts of engravings on the metal. No, I don't want that. S- I want very simple. I want black right. with silver tips and I or and she's gonna be the right shape, right? Or I want a really like sort of Art Deco styling one. I saw one uh, online. It was a one-off custom cane someone made for a project. It was beautiful, right? But anyway, it they wanted like could, nine thousand right, dollars for we it. We could make that cane, right? Really cheap. Just get a piece of wood, you know, put it in the spinny thingy, make it the right shape. Uh, you mean a lathe? Thing? Yeah, lathe. That's the no, word. that's not how you make yeah, anyway. But it doesn't. It just has to look right. You 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 lacquer it black. You put the get the metal things and attach it to both ends. No, there's more to it than that. If you just do that one, it's not going to be a super even coat. It's not going to look nicely black. You got to get a wood and stain it. You don't if paint you, it. No, if it's if it's spinning and you spray it black while no, it's spinning. No, you don't spray it. You stain it or look like shit. Mm. It's also going to be matte, not shiny. That's what I'm saying. You don't you don't use spray paint for that. That would look awful. You don't use spray paint, but you would spray the paint. No, not with paint. With an air you spray. You thing. don't use paint for something like that. You've clearly never worked with wood before. Anyway, <laughs> you can make it really easily, and it would not cost you even close to ten, you know, ten dollars, let alone a thousand dollars. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't have that certain level of polish. It's kind of like how. You see the guy wearing the suit now, at least I do, and you can tell like how expensive the suit is and or how nice it is just by the cut. Like You see a cheap suit and you're like, wow, the lapels are really uneven. I bet if I had the materials and enough extra materials to practice a few times, I could, and I could make canes that look great. 
I don't think you can make them cheaper than similarly uh, made I games I could definitely make internet. it less than a thousand dollars. No, the ones that are of that level of quality you're talking about are like 40 bucks. Oh. But they kind of look like shit, and they break. Mm. What kind of wood do you propose to use? Cheap wood. Yeah. If it breaks, that's not a problem. Just don't break it. It's just got to look good, right? It's like the $4 umbrella. It's just got to, it works, it gets you home. The cane will get you to the theater and home. It's all good. I kind of want to get a top hat. All right, so get one. To wear with tails at things. What thing are you going to wear that to? The opera. Yeah, you'd stand out, be weird. I saw, the last time I went to a show, I saw How one many? Per- one. I saw one person with a top hat. One dude. Yeah. Yeah. That's the weird dude everyone points at and goes giggly, giggly. You think I'm not a weird dude? You think I'm not going to be eccentric, silver-haired, old crazy guy? Then why don't you go full out with like purple jacket and sparkles and a That's a different kind of rainbow eccentric. Rainbow tie and yellow orange pants. Rainbow dash tie. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, Rod Roddy style. <laughs> or uh who's the hockey guy? Uh Don Cherry. <laughs> Just like Don Cherry. Hockey I think we're done Ca- here. Hockey night in Canada. I think we're done here. Yeah. This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brando K for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night. 